Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to install uh, your super storage. Um, it is the SD card mod for the SNES Classic and NES Classic. Um, if you ordered one, uh, it'll come in three pieces basically. You got the two pieces here that are uh, circuit boards. Um, one is for actually attaching to the SNES and the other one is the micro SD card slot. Um, and then the third piece is a ribbon cable that goes in between them. Uh, so it's a pretty easy install. I've got an SNES here uh, that we can look at and uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take apart the SNES. Um, it's pretty easy to do. There's only four screws on the underside of these little pads. So what I like to do is I like to get just a small little uh, flat head bit from my screwdriver and then just carefully lift these out. Um, I usually stick them on the bottom so I don't lose them. I have lost them and it just kind of sucks. And that should be all four of them. Now there is some uh, Phillips head screwdrivers in there. Um, any small bit will do. Um, if you have like an iFixit kit or something like that, any like Japanese standard one will work. Um, you can just go ahead and unscrew these. So now that all four screws are out, um, you can just lift the top off. You want to be careful because there's this ribbon cable here that connects the power switch um, and the reset switch to the main motherboard. And you can just disconnect that by kind of pulling on this blue tab here. Uh, make sure you pull along with the cable so you don't rip it off. And just come up, pull it out and it'll come out fine. So here's the motherboard. Um, you got the two controller ports here, so you can just unplug these. Just like that. Um, and then there's the heat shield on here, which is secured by five of the same type of screws, so you can just take those out. And then once you have all the screws out, um, just kind of gently lift on, up on the heat shield. Uh, you might want to wiggle it around a little bit. It's going to act like it's stuck with some glue, but it's really the thermal pad that's underneath this little concave bit here. And it should just lift up pretty easily. There's a thermal pad. Um, make sure that when you set this away that you keep it face up so it doesn't get any dirt on there. And then now you can just lift out the circuit board. So I'm going to grab some of my soldering tools and uh, fire up my soldering iron um, so we can get this install started. Okay, so I uh, fired up my soldering iron. Um, it's heating up right now. So uh, I put a circuit board in this um, circuit board vise. Um, it's really nice for doing solder jobs like this because it holds it nice and steady. Uh, so let's take a look at what came in the package again. You should have gotten um, this piece here. This is the actual motherboard adapter. Um, it goes on like this. If you have an NES uh, Classic, uh, not the 2018 version, but the 2016 version, uh, you should have gotten a board that looks like this one here. Um, it's just a slightly different pin layout, um, and instead of being on the underside of the board, it's on the top side of the board. Um, so it's basically the same thing. You just set it on the points and then you solder. So I'm just going to get this lined up. Um, one thing you want to watch for is the smaller pins on the top really need to be exposed in order for you to solder onto them. So 
I'm gonna line up those first and then I'm just gonna use a piece of tape and just tape it to the side there so it kind of holds it in place. I'm just gonna put it on just like that. And then I'll take it off once I do a couple points. Make sure it's nice and lined up. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be straight, uh, just so that you, all the pins are exposed and they're easy to solder to. So now that we have this uh, kind of secured, I'm going to go ahead and, and solder um, the board to the main board of the SNES. Uh, so I have a nice little Weller soldering iron. Um, it's got a very pointy tip on it. It's very nice for this type of work. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and touch these points. So I'm running into a problem where there's not enough heat going to the board. So I'm going to use some flux. Um, it just kind of helps with the solder job. It's probably more than I need to use, but I'm just going to spread it all in there. Now that we have the flux applied, um, it should be easier to solder the two boards together. Hey guys, so I decided to do a voiceover of this part. Um, I ran into some trouble. I wasn't using enough heat to solder to the board. Um, this was a new soldering iron tip, uh, so it needed to be broken in a little bit. I probably should have done a couple of installs before I actually did this recording, uh, but it's okay. Uh, mistakes happen. The main idea is to use enough heat where the solder will melt on the SNES motherboard. Um, and they'll attach, but not to use enough where the pads might lift off. I've done that a couple times and it really sucks and it's almost not repairable. Um, if you do this, let me know and I can give you some tips. Um, but the whole idea here is to use enough heat, um, hold it enough on the board where it, it, you know, for a long enough time where it will melt and they'll join together, but not enough that it'll cause any damage. So all the points are soldered, um, as you can see, uh, my camera is having a hard time focusing, but there we go. Um, so all those points are soldered, so now we can take off this tape that was kind of holding this board in place, um, and it should be on there, really, uh, really quite stable. So now we can take the board out and we will put it back in the case. So one thing you might want to do uh, before we put it all back together is insert the ribbon cable, uh, which would be this piece here. So to insert this, what you have to do is there are these little tabs, or there's this little uh, locking mechanism here. And what you do is you pull, the, pull that out, just like that. And then you take this ribbon cable and insert it with the blue, fo blue side facing up. And it should just slide in there. And then you can take this and push it in, a little lo mo uh, locking mechanism. And then it should be pretty snug in there. You shouldn't be able to pull it out. Okay, now uh, all that's left is just to screw this in.
Okay, so now that it's screwed together, um, all we have to do is plug in the SD card slot, um, which is this piece here. It'll say on the bottom also. Um, so to do that, it's the same thing as doing the underside. Uh, so you just take these little tabs and pull them out. And then you slide in the cable, uh, blue side up, and then you press that locking mechanism in. Uh, so that should be mounted. Um, so all I'm going to do is take a piece of tape and uh, tape this cable down and tape this SD card slot here. Um, I'm going to put my SD cards in before I get any of that done. Just like that. And like that. Uh, so everything should be put back together. Uh, we have the controllers in, we have the SD card slot mounted. Um, if you wanted to, you could mount this anywhere you want inside the case. Um, there is like slits in the back uh, for the heat thing here. So you could uh, make a little incision here uh, to, try to, to try to fit the SD card slot in. Um, but I usually just leave mine like this because I have the top off anyway all the time. Uh, so now we're going to just connect the power cable back in, or the, the power switch cable. And then I'm just going to close this up. I'm not going to screw it back together. And now we can uh, check it out through software. Okay, so we're back at my computer. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is install the new kernel. Um, if you've already hacked your system uh, with HackG2, I'd recommend probably doing this again. Uh, make sure you have the latest version of HackG2 CE. Uh, the one I have right now is 1.2.5. Uh, so make sure you have that installed. And then you can just go up to kernel and then install repair. Click yes. Uh, it's just going to tell you to, to uh, power up your Super Nintendo. So what you're going to want to do is hold your reset button up and then press the power switch up. And then it should start to install the kernel. Okay, looks like it finished. The next thing you want to do is install the proper uh, U-boot. So there's two that you can choose between, uh, normal mode and SD mode. We want SD mode, obviously, because we want to run with an SD card. Uh, so you just do flash U-boot and then SD mode. Um, and assuming your system shows up in green here, it sh will just like automatically boot it um, and then flash it. Uh, if not, it's going to ask you to go through the same process as installing the kernel, so you'll have to hold reset up and then press power and then let go of reset. Okay, it looks like it finished. Now I'm just going to wait for the SNES to show up again, and what we're going to do is uh, connect to the machine uh, through Telnet. Um, and verify that the mod is working uh, by checking some of the uh, Linux devices and making sure it pops up. Um, so it sounds like it's connecting. It looks like it's taking a little bit longer to boot up, which sounds like it's working right now. Um, SD mode, when you have it flashed, it does take a little bit longer to boot up and show up in HackG, but it should work fine. So now that the system's connected, um, you'll see that it's, it'll be green down here and it'll say SSH online. Um, if you check tools and then Telnet server on, this is a Telnet server that we're going to connect to just to verify that the mod isn't working. Uh, so you're going to want to go to PuTTY and go to 169.254.13.37. Uh, this might vary depending on uh, your system or what hack version you're on. Uh, check Again, just check 
tools and make sure that this is the thing that you want to connect to. Hit open. And then we're just going to log in as root. There should be no password. And then to verify that the system is working, what we want to do is check the devices that are connected to the system. So if you do ls forward slash dev, D-E-V, and then hit enter, it should show up a bunch of devices that are connected to the system. What we're looking for specifically is MMC BLK0. So now that this is showing up, this is telling me that it, it was a successful install. MMC is a pretty common nomenclature for uh, SD storage. Uh, so if it's not showing up, I would check your solder connections, check the ribbon cable going between the two boards, make sure those are set. Um, make sure that your SD card is not uh, broken or anything like that. Make sure that you can connect it to a computer. Uh, format, format, uh, format it as FAT32, reconnect it to the system, power it back up, see if it shows up. Um, otherwise, uh, it might show up as having multiple partitions. It might say MMC, BLK0, P1, uh, P2, that type of thing. It just shows that there's multiple partitions on it. If you're having any other troubles, uh, let me know. Uh, you can email me at support at echo10.io. I'll put that in the description as well as the website, which is uh, echo10.io. You can also check me out at Discord. My name is Dr. Dalek. Um, you can get there by going to uh, hackshiresources.com. They'll have a link for the Discord there. Or you can go to reddit.com slash r slash mini SNES mods, and they'll have it in the sidebar. Uh, so yeah, I hope that helps. Um, if you're on the fence about buying a super storage and just wanted to see the installation process, I hope this kind of gave you an idea of, of how easy it can be if you've done soldering stuff before. If you haven't and this looks a little daunting, I do offer installation services. Uh, so you can always hit me up. Uh, there is a product on the product page for doing that. So you can just check out um, and then I will contact you to give me uh, your info and then we will move from, forward from there. Um, so yeah, thank you again. Uh, this video was done for doing an installation for somebody else um, and it seemed to work out okay so i will package the, this up and ship this out to them um, so again thank you for watching and uh, let me know if you have any questions